we are looking at standard form. So we'll first focus on what's the point of standard form and what is it. Um, we'll see how it can be applied to both big numbers and small numbers, um, how we can multiply two standard form numbers together, and then finally, um, we'll do some exam style questions to finish off. So what is standard form and what is the point of standard form? Well, standard form is really useful if we want to write down really big or really small numbers. You know, imagine if we're talking about, say, the number of stars in the Milky Way. Well, it's roughly 100 billion, right? So imagine we've, we've measured the number of stars and it's, um, I don't know, 113 billion stars. So it's 113 with nine zeros at the end. Well, it'd be a real hassle to have to write down this, this you know, long string of zeros every single time we wanted to reference this, this value, right? Imagine, you know, we've got a, a scientific paper, but you don't want half of our paper to just be zeros. It'd be much nicer if we can, we can condense this down um, and, you know, represent this value in a much uh, shorter format. And what we can do is we can use standard form to achieve that. So there's one rule in standard form, and um, that is that we have a number at the start and that number has to be between one and 10. We then take this original number and we times it by some scale factor and we make it either uh, much, much bigger or much, much smaller, depending on um, our needs, depending on what the original number is that we want to represent. So in this case, um, let's, let's focus on this. We've got this massive number and we need to first think of a number between one and 10 that can represent our digits. Well, in this case, it's going to be 1.13, right? You know, we'll, we'll see why in a second. Where, you know, if we if we tried any other number to represent these digits, you know, we, if we tried, say, 11.3, well, 11.3 is bigger than 10, right? It's not between 1 and 10, so that wouldn't be correct. If we tried um, 0.113, uh, again, that wouldn't be correct, right? We, we know that um, 0.113 is not between 1 and 10. The, the correct answer is going to be 1.13 for, um, for that first value, right? So this is a kind of base value, and this is our scale factor. Um, so what we, um, what we now do, now that we've got our kind of base value, is we work out what is the scale factor? How much do we need to times 1.13 by to convert it into 113 billion? Well, if we look at where the decimal point is at the moment in this, in this original number, it's at the end here, right? It's, you know, there's actually a decimal point there. We just don't bother putting it in. Um, and at the moment, we've got our decimal point in between these first two ones. Our decimal point is here at the moment in our number. So we need to convert from this tiny number with the decimal point here to this massive number with the decimal point here. And so we just work out how many, how many um, columns we need to shift our decimal point across by um, to make this number um, as big as it needs to be. Right, so if we if we look at the number of jumps we need to make, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 spaces we need to jump. <coughs> and so we're basically timesing it by um, 10 11 times over. Well, timesing something by 10 and timesing it by 10 again and 10 again 11 times is just timesing it by 10 to the power of 11. And so... This is how, um, yeah, let's actually put that in there. This is how we can represent our, um, our number in standard form. That would be, that would be our, our solution. Um, so that's, that's kind of half of big numbers covered actually, just in the definition of standard form. We can also work back the other way, right? So we can, we can take a, um, a number in standard form and we can represent it as an ordinary number. Let's say we, we take, um, I don't know, um, 52, times 10 to the, um, I don't know, times 10 to the nine. This is 52 billion. And we want to represent this as a standard form number. Well, let's say it's, let's say uh, this is actually 5.2, or that'd be our correct standard form format. Um, and we want, to, we want to convert this into an ordinary number. So there's, so a number with, with no standard form in it anymore. Um, well, we, you know, we know we have to start off with our decimal point between the five and the two. And we need to shift it down nine spaces, right? Nine columns, thereby making the number um, 10 to the nine times bigger. And so if we do that, if we, if we shift it down nine spaces, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's now gonna go there. And all we do is we fill in the gaps with 
zero. So every single time we have a, an empty column, we just put a zero there. And this is our new number, right? Our new number is five, two, zero, 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 zero. We can put in our commas if we wanted to. That's gonna be five billion, 200 million. And that's gonna be our answer to, um, to that. Um, we can also do small numbers. So again, imagine we're talking about say, um, the width of a proton. All right, that's around um, eight times 10 to the minus 14 meters. Um, you often see this, you know, in textbooks and things talking about protons. Um, well, you know, again, this is much this is a much nicer way of doing this. If we wanted to convert this to a ordinary number, that should be minus 14, sorry. Um, if we wanted to convert this to an ordinary number, all we do is very similar to what we did here, right? We we start off with, you know, this is this is basically 8.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Um, we start off with our decimal point here. We know that we need to move our decimal point to the left in order to make our number, you know, 10 to the 14 times smaller. Well, we look at how many times we need to make that jump. In this case, it's 14 times. You have to jump across 14 columns. And so if I give myself some room, um, 8.0, if we jump across 14 columns, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Should have picked a small, uh, better number, um, but there we go. And we can fill in our gaps with the zeros like we always do, because we, you know, we, we can't put any other number than zero in here. Um, that's gonna be our new number, right? It's gonna be 0. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way down to uh, eight there. Um, and likewise, we can go the other way as well, right? We can, we can take a number um, that's an ordinary number and convert it back into standard form. Um, let's find a look at multiplication. So if we've got say two numbers, both in standard form, we could have say, um, I don't know, let's keep it nice, three times 10 to the five times four times 10 to the seven. Well, we've just got three, uh, sorry, four different terms, all times each other together, right? If we've got a bunch of terms all times each other together, it doesn't matter what way around we do the multiplication in. Let's say we've got say, um, two times three times five. Well, that's the exact same as doing five times two times three, right? And it's the exact same as doing three times five times two, or whatever we wanna do. Um, you know, in all cases, we're gonna get 30, right? Every single time, no matter what way around we do it, um, we always end up getting 30. And so we can use this basic principle um, to make this bit nicer for ourselves, right? We can, we can move our numbers together and move our powers together. And so we can write this as three times four times 10 to the five times 10 to the seven. We know three times four is gonna give, uh, give us 12 and 10 to the five times 10 to the seven is gonna give us 10 to the 12. And it'd be very tempting to leave it there. Normally when we answer these kind of questions, we need to put our answer in standard form as well. At the moment we can see this 12 is not between one and 10. And so we look at this, we say, well, how do we take these digits of one and two and make a number that's between one and 10? Well, that's gonna be 1.2, right? That's gonna be our initial value. And then our scale factor, if we've made this number 10 times smaller, we've gotta make our scale factor 10 times bigger so that the overall value of our final answer doesn't actually change. And so instead of 10 to the 12, it's gonna be 10. The 13. And that'll be our, our final answer. Right, so let's do a couple of exam style questions to finish off with. So um, we want to write 3.08 times 10 to the minus 5 as an ordinary number. So I'll just write it out here 3.08 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, in this case, we're going to be shifting our, our decimal point up to the left, right, to make our number move down to the right. And so I just take this decimal point, I might, I might write out down here, 3.08, and I shift this five spaces to the left, three, four, five. So that's gonna be my new position. I fill in the gaps with zeros. And so our final answer is gonna be 0 0.000308. Right, five million in standard form. Well, five million 
a million is just 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. All right, it's, it's uh, one with six zeros at the end of it. And we can represent that in standard form as just 10 to the power of six. And again, rather than just one million, it's five million. So it's five lots of one million. So this is this is uh, one million here. Um, finally, calculate 6.3 times 10 to the 5 times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Can't just write it out down here. Times 10 to the 5 times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2. And again, we use the same principle as the previous page, right? We, we've got four different terms here, all times in each other together. We can rearrange this as we like. So I'm going to put my numbers at the front, 6.3 times 2.5 and my powers at the back, times 10 to the five, times 10 to the minus two. Well, I can, I can work this out first, you know, assuming this is a non-calculated paper, I can do 6.3 times 2.5. And if I do that, I have to remember what column I'm starting in. So this is, a, I can do both ways actually. So um, I do 0.3 times 0.5, that's gonna give me, I put, I put a kind of zero here, first in my in my mind and I start in the column over um, that's gonna give me 1 5 15 and then I can do 0.3 times 2 that's gonna give me 6 plus the 1 is 7 and then do 6 times 0.5 and I'm gonna start in this column now that's gonna give me 30 so I carry the 3 put a 0 there and I then do 6 times 2 that's 12 plus the 3 is 5 so I end up with uh, 15 so with 15, I end up with 15.75. Um, that's probably actually easier than we, we needed to do. Um, we can then focus on this one as well. Um, 10 to the 5 times 10 to the minus 2. That's going to give us 10 to the power of 3. Right? All we're doing again is we're just adding those two um, powers together. And so it's tempting to write down our answer as 15.75 times 10 to the 3. What we see is we need our answer in standard form. At the moment, this is not in standard form, right? This is not between 1 and 10. I have to make this first number 10 times smaller, and I then have to make this second number 10 times bigger to convert it into standard form. So we end up with um, 1.575 times 10 to the power of 4, and that is our final answer. And that is the end of standard form.